Hello and welcome. Here we have my first impressions of a Moto Guzzi V7. Just so you know, I do not get these bikes for longer than anyone else booking a test ride. So these rides will be anywhere from 30 minutes to one hour long, depending on the dealer. But that can also include checking the bike has been returned in one piece. Um. So if you're interested in this motorcycle, then stay with me while we go over how it rode and what I liked and disliked. It's very buzzy at um, 30 miles now. I can't get my head around that gearbox at the moment. Don't know whether it's because I've got boots on. Oh, oh the shift is just shorter than usual. So this is the first shaft driven motorcycle I have ever ridden. And it's also the only second V-twin I have ridden. The difference between how the 90 degree V-twin is mounted in the frame compared to my old Suzuki SV650S is the engine is across the frame rather than having the cylinders in line with the frame. The engine puts out around 65 brake horsepower, so about the same as my SV650 produced, but a different vibe altogether. When starting the bike you can certainly tell the engine is running and a quick twist of the throttle does something strange to the hot bike. It shifts to the left. I believe the BMW Boxer engine does something similar. I'm not sure if it's due to the engine layout or it being a shaft drive. And it's a bit of torque not being cancelled out in one direction. Let me know if you know what it is in the comments. Brakes work. I'll get off this and it'll feel like I've been using a power tool for several hours. That's oh, really buzzy in the bars. The ride is what a lot of reviewers call characterful. It's not smooth or a refined ride for my test ride, with vibrations at all speeds in the handlebars. It does have plenty of get up and go on the engine and it is very willing and can easily meet UK regulation speeds. The controls are all easy to reach and where you expect them to be. I did have issues with the gear lever placement but got used to it reasonably quickly and I'm sure it's just an adjustment for personal taste. Ergonomically, this motorcycle you sit on rather than in, so you have a more upright posture which can be less painful to ride for long periods and reduces stress to your wrists. It's easy to get on with such a low seat height and you can easily get both feet flat on the floor, or I can at 5 feet 10. I'm doing 60. Four skier. It's easy to manoeuvre, but I'm not sure it's had a full tank of fuel. 21 litres seems rather large. At speed or at slow speeds, apart from the vibration, it handles well and would filter in traffic with few issues. It can certainly handle dual carriageway and country lanes as well with plenty of acceleration and speed on tap. Fuel in is not very nice. I 
I'm just trying to hold 60 and it's surging and yeah it's definitely a bike full of character um, let's see if it'll do 70 and feel any better oh, it's got six gears The brakes are amazing compared to the scooter. But the comfort, oh no, the scooter just absolutely astoundingly beats this. They do make some nice noises. I can't argue with that. Let's see if I can find a nice quiet spot in here to have a quick walk around it. So, let's cover some of the specs that you would want to know if you're looking for a commuter motorcycle. The seat height is 780mm, the width of the entire bike is 800mm at its widest point, fuel economy is around 63 miles per gallon depending on many variables, the wet weight of the motorcycle is 218kg, it's fitted with ABS, it's weather protection as it's a classic motorcycle is nil, and also it's storage without having something else bolted onto it is nil. I'd definitely say it's got some character. There are lots of other specifications you might like to read out. Like suspension, brake, disc size and tyre size. For commuting, most standard suspension and brake setups will work just fine on a modern motorcycle. Let's just stick it here. It's this vintage looking lamp post. I'll make it look nice and good. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder and it's not by any means a direct copy of anything else in this segment of naked classic styled motorcycles. The version I took out has alloy wheels which look modern and a single round headlight with the eagle across the center. Unfortunately as I cannot ride the bike at night I couldn't comment on how that single headlight is down on lit roads. So, good looking bike, classy looking. So just have a quick walk around it. That's one I've been interested to ride because the engine configuration is completely different. Most engine uh, cylinders are in line with the bike in some description. Twin pipes. Looks pretty good. As a commuter there is no storage to speak of so you're going to have to add that separately as well as any other weather protection you may like to fit. Let's just have a look quickly at some pictures of this motorcycle. For me the controls are too close. Back brake's in the right place, but I'm struggling with that brake lever. Ah, sorry, not the brake lever, the brake lever's in the right place. But I'm struggling with the shift. <laughs> Brakes, like I say, they're pretty good. I'll easily do 70. Yeah, it falls like a train. A nice big flashy bar. Close to the rev limits. Pretty fun. Let's go and see what it's like down a country lane. The suspension's better by loads than that of the scooter. Well, the scooter doesn't buzz this much in my hands. Uh, 
<laughs> New laws with the cyclists and things. And I actually see the bridge, so. Uh -oh. As long as I thought it was going to take to get here. And it just doesn't want to run. It always feels like it's wanting to pull. To me, it's not a very smooth ride at all. It sounds pretty awesome, to be fair. The black exhausts and downpipes, the rectangle shaped tank rather than the more oval shape means it stands out as different to the, the standard naked classic designs currently available from other brands. I think its main competition looks wise would be the Yamaha XSR models. Power's there. Speedometer gauge is nice and clear, rev counter not so much. got plenty of power but it's just not a refined motorcycle if you're looking for something smooth uh, and pleasurable to ride for a long period of time I don't think this is that bike uh, yeah it's, it does have a nice sound to thrash the hell out of it. Like I say, you pull the throttle back. It seems to me that vibrations actually just get faster. Therefore, seems to get a little bit smaller, but uh, to me, this is like holding on to a power drill, which isn't pleasant. Yeah, nice flashy black ball if you redline it, that makes it a bit more noticeable. I'd say it's definitely quick enough, but for me, suspension's trying to smooth out something that the engine causes, not the road. For me, the entire thing today is vibrating. Oh, this made me wonder whether that left hand cylinder is even working, but. This is a shaft driven motorcycle, so no chain maintenance and that is one of the two almost unique selling points of this motorcycle going into 2023. No other motorcycle in its class is shaft driven and soon it will be one of the only V-twins left as most of the other manufacturers move to parallel twins with possibly variety in firing order but most at 270 degrees. The single display is for most easy to read my only issue was with the rev counter being a little unreadable around the edge of the screen, but the flashing eagle across the displays, suggestion of when to change gear if you happen to be looking at it. It's 
telling me the lights are on. Which, yeah. I so wanted this bike to be epic, and in some ways, it gives those thrills of riding something a bit different. For me, those vibrations are not something I would choose to live with. On a daily basis, in fact this is a motorcycle I could happily have handed back after getting into the first roundabout. It's not as smooth to ride or as polished as other bikes in this category, but it will stand out from the crowd. Obviously this is my own opinion, and I would like to thank Arnold's Motorcycles for letting me take this bike out. They can be found at arnoldsmotorcycles.com Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe. Links to the more information about this motorcycle will be in the description. Thank you.